Hi everyone, and welcome to Politics Tech Lightning. Are you stuck provisioning your infrastructure in Azure using a portal? Clicking around to deploy your resources has a specific name, namely ClickOps. So stick around as I explain how and why you should move away from ClickOps to a DevSecOps way of working. Here we go. Let's start by defining some key terms. Many of you may already be familiar with this. First up, we have ClickOps. ClickOps, as defined by the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, is the process of provisioning, configuring, and managing resources by clicking in portals, management consoles, and wizards. Every time that you deploy a resource using the Azure portal, you're in fact using something called ClickOps. Next up, we will talk about DevOps. If you've been in the IT world long enough, you might recall a time when the IT teams, they operated in silos. Developers, they focused solely on writing code, while operations teams were responsible for deploying and maintaining applications. DevSecOps breaks down these silos by merging development and operations into one unified team. This approach fosters better collaboration and shared responsibility. Instead of passing the code over the wall, the same team is now accountable for building, deploying, and ensuring the application's runs reliable. There's no room for finger pointing, as it's all about shared ownership. Now, DevSecOps, you can think of this as an extension of DevOps, which includes then the security team and their practices in the entire flow. With this way of working, one team is responsible to write it, run it, and also to ensure that it follows the security practices. Infrastructure as Code, IIC, is at the heart of DevSecOps. It simplifies the ways we define and deploy infrastructure in Azure, like virtual machines, load balancers, and much, much more. We declare the infrastructure we want to use using a language such as Bicep or Terraform. Now, many companies are still using ClickOps. And while initially it may work well, it's not a good way in the long term. But let's not be all doom and gloom. Let's first look at some positive aspects of ClickOps. First of all, we can say ClickOps, it's very easy to use, right? You can quite quickly deploy a single resource in Azure when you're being guided through a wizard, which gives you then all the options that you need to fill in. Secondly, we can say using ClickOps, it helps troubleshooting. If you have a problem in the environment, it seems easier to adjust a few settings in the portal to see if the issue is solved. Thirdly, it's also easier to read and check configuration. If you want to check a specific setup or connectivity between resources, the portal is really not a bad option. However, these benefits are also the bane of an Azure infrastructure. As you can immediately start with ClickOps, many companies still think it's an excellent way to set up their environment. What they don't realize is that the longer you use ClickOps, the more of a technical debt you build up. Let me explain, and I will go into detail about the issues that we have with ClickOps. First of all, we build up a technical debt with a hidden cost, right? ClickOps may seem like an easy way to deploy resources in Azure, after all, it's just a few click clicks in the portal, right? But as an organization and companies scale and grow, this approach becomes a costly bottleneck. For example, deploying a virtual machine in the Azure portal requires navigating eight different tabs, each with important information that has to be filled in correctly before the resource can be deployed. While this process might work for a single virtual machine, it becomes increasingly difficult to ensure a consistent, and error-free entries as the number grows. So over time, the limitation of ClickOps, they become painfully clear. Routine tasks, such as adding additional disk to multiple virtual machines with a specific configuration, they are very time consuming and it's a repetitive process. With the DevSecOps and Infrastructure as Code, IAC, the deployment and configuration, they're automated. They're version controlled, they're easily replicated, and they're also scalable. Number two on our list, we have release management with different staging environments. Now, imagine having to set up and 
configure production, staging, and test as separate environments using ClickOps. In fact, it's not only setting up the environment, but they also need to be maintained with changes and updates. Right? Just the thought of that should give you nightmares. So the solution to this, DevSecOps, it solves this by having the environment as a blueprint in code. You can easily copy the same configuration, add just a few parameters, and voila, you have a new environment ready to go. Thirdly, we have to think about backup and disaster recovery. Imagine you have set up the environment using ClickOps, right? Did you now also spend countless of hours documenting how you set it up, which options that you ticked in the portal? Well, imagine there's a major issue. Your environments get deleted or it becomes corrupted by, for example, a rogue admin. Using DevSecOps, you can easily bring the environment back it's in its approved state. And not only that, think about doing a disaster recovery to another region. You can just change a few parameters, such as the location of the resource, run the pipeline again, and there you go. The identical infrastructure in another region is immediately ready. Okay, well, I know that in practice, there's a little bit more work to it than that. But regardless, it's actually much easier using infrastructure as code than ClickOps. Also, you can also say that your code is your actual documentation of your infrastructure. One source of truth. Number four, security and compliance. With Azure policies, we can have quite a good and robust governance in place. Using ClickOps uh, to create resources, they will be created and maybe certain components will fail and be blocked due to a policy. With DevSecOps, we can go a step further. We can run security scans and checks on the code itself before we deploy it. This means that we can catch any non-compliance before we actually hit the deploy button. So we can then solve these null compliances before the actual go live date. And when it's time to go live, we're 100% ready and compliant. We hit the deploy button and the deployment is successful. Now, those are the four biggest benefits with DevSecOps and using infrastructure as code. Now, is everything rainbows and sunshine with DevSecOps? Like everything in life, most definitely not. There's a balance to be had. Because there's also some challenges with this approach. So let's look at them. Right? The first one that comes to my mind is that using infrastructure as code requires a specific IT profile called cloud engineer. So you really need to have experience in order to be effective with infrastructure as code. It's not possible to just take a few weekends and think you're good enough to use infrastructure as code to set up your whole environment. Secondly, in some instances, it actually can be slower, right? The idea is that the code is the single source of truth. Administrators, they only have read access to the Azure portal, uh, so they're not able to make changes there. So to make changes, you have to use it in the code, it's in the pipeline, and the pipeline has then access to your environment with a service principle. So in case you're trying to resolve an issue in the portal, you may need only to click one option. You see the option in front of you, you just need to click it, save. With infrastructure as code, you need to go through the code, find the issue, find the setting, change the setting, have it paired, reviewed, and only then you're being uh, deploying the code. Thirdly, infrastructure as code is incredibly powerful, but with great power comes great responsibility. You can spin up an entire environment with a click of a button, but you can also destroy an entire environment with that same button or command. So be aware and make sure there are safeguards in place, such as resource locks to prevent deletion of key resources. As you can see, DevSecOps and infrastructure as code versus ClickOps is not entirely black and white. You need to understand the benefits along with the drawbacks so that you can take the best decision. Let's say you have set up your environment using ClickOps and are incredibly inspired by this video to move on to DevOps 
or DevSecOps with infrastructure as code. How do you go about this? Well, there are actually different tools out there to transfer your existing environment into code. Uh, either you transfer it into Bicep or Terraform. If we were thinking about Terraform, you can use AZTF export, which is a command line utility to export everything in code. Obviously, it's not only the technical part of exporting the code. Afterwards, you need to ensure that you have the correct structure in place along with the right people. If you have a small Azure footprint, you can start by putting everything into code and afterwards you build up the DevSecOps practices along with the necessary pipelines, CICD systems. Alternatively, you can contact a company such as the one where I work, ACA Group. They can transfer your entire environment and way of working into code. Afterwards, they can help you set up the DevSecOps practice within your organization or they can even completely manage it for you. That said, this video is not sponsored by ACA Group. Since I work for them and they have a similar offering, I do have their permission to publish their video. I can truly recommend that you can switch over to Infrastructure as Code as quickly as possible. It may seem challenging, but you will be thanking me in the near future. Before going, I want to mention that I have written a blog post on how to transition from ClickOps to DevSecOps, and the link is in the description of this video. Until next time, take care. See ya.